All right. Uh, so um, first of all, uh, this is joint work with Claire Boone, who's at Chicago, Pablo Selje, who's at Catholica in Santiago, Chile, and Tadea Grotzner, who has just moved to USC, Eileen. Um, and uh, uh, I do also want to acknowledge that this work was supported by a CETA pilot grant, just to give a little advertising to the uh, really useful things that CETA does for, for us impoverished faculty at uh, UC Berkeley. Um, so this paper is about uh, how important uh, preventive care visits are for managing uh, chronic disease. So if you make a preventive care visit, uh, that's an opportunity to, uh, to do diagnostic tests, such as if you have hypertension, to have your blood pressure taken, diabetes, your hemoglobin A1C. And this is information which tells you whether your chronic disease is controlled or uncontrolled. And uncontrolled diseases can lead to uh, long-term um, adverse consequences and even um, mortality. Uh, and then this screening information, testing information, can change, uh, lead to changes in medication, medication adherence, and subsequent when care, in particular, um, identifying complications of your disease, which might require hospitalization, you can catch them early uh, and get, get into care and lower the negative uh, adverse health outcomes for untreated complications. Now, the problem with this is in most places in the world, uh, preventive care is really underutilized. Uh, in many countries, up to 50% of people with diagnosed chronic diseases miss their appointments. And uh, there are a bunch of behavioral reasons. Uh, forgetfulness and is a big one, is a reason often cited for why these preventive care visits are missed. So in this paper, this is about um, a uh, looking at uh, the impact or the value of an additional primary care visit, preventive visit for screening on patient health behaviors and subsequent uh, healthcare utilization. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, this is in Chile and it's nationally representative, a very large sample. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at an at scale program, not a small, RCT, which looks at um, an intervention in Busia, Kenya, um, but uh, really uh, tells us some that has some external validity. And there in Chile, they introduced a appointment reminder system in the public health care system, which uh, covers 80% of the population. Um, and uh, appointment reminders, there's evidence in the literature and here we'll show you that these appointment reminders do increase uh, the probability that, uh, that patients keep these appointments. And so we're going to use the SMS reminder system, uh, the variation introduced for that, uh, to look at the impact of primary healthcare visits on these health behaviors. Um, okay. Uh, so the setting, as I said, is Chile. Um, and uh, Claire, who's our co-author, is Canadian. So what she did was compare uh, Chile's um, uh, epidemiological statistics to Canada to say it was a developed country. Now, to accept that, you have to believe Canada is a developed country. Um, and so prevalence of hypertension is about the same, and prevalence of type 2 diabetes is about the same. About 80% of the population goes through a public health care system, which is considered to be high quality. Uh, Chile is an OECD country uh, and has health care systems uh, about the same level and income about the same uh, as, uh, as uh, Portugal, Italy, Greece, uh, things like that, countries like that. Um, the public health care system is low cost, free primary care and medications after diseases for uh, for priority diseases. 
And it works uh, where patients are assigned to a primary health care clinic based on where they live. And it's hard to switch. So there's no shopping for care uh, going on here. You have essentially a gatekeeper uh, who manages all your care, and that gatekeeper is assigned based on um, based on where you live. Uh, second, the other one of the big advantages of working in Chile is um, the whole program is federally administered, so the same payments, policies, regulations, and incentives uh, are universal. And uh, they have uh, electronic medical records uh, where the data are collected in the same way across all clinics and all hospitals. And so, and so there's this large data set which is linkable at the uh, patient level, patient across levels of care. Um, and so um, it has a lot of advantages for this type of work. Um, okay, so we have this appointment reminder system we're going to use. This was developed by Chile's Minister of Health, made available to all public primary uh, health care clinics, conditional on having electronic uh, records. And basically, when you make an appointment, you get an SMS reminder of that appointment 24 to 48 hours ahead of time, where you can say, I'm coming. I need to cancel and uh, and reschedule. Um, and this appointment reminder system was sent to individuals who are diagnosed with diabetes and hypertension. Um, the other so this SMS uh, SMS policy was rolled out over time, uh, and so we have spatial temporal temporal variation in who gets SMSs. And there is also um, implementation, variation in implementation uh, facility. It took clinics a while to figure out how to use this. So the share of patients who are eligible that got, got these messages uh, uh, varied across clinics and within clinic over time. And we're gonna take advantage of that implementation fidelity data uh, or compliance, and one might call it as further variation for identification. Um, and so here you can see uh, the take up of clinics of the SMS uh, system. Uh, it began in 2015. Most of the clinics that we're going to adopt adopted in two, 2015, about 80% of them, and the rest of them adopted uh, a year later. Um, okay. Uh, and then here is the distribution of the uh, implementation. Uh, fidelity. These are the share of eligible patients who received an, an SMS, and this is the distribution in 2016. So there are some clinics that sent uh, very uh, 10 to 20 percent of their eligible patients, and other clinics which were sending uh, 78 to 80. So there's cross-sectional variation in implementation. As you can see, this distribution shifts to the right over time. Uh, so uh, we're going to take advantage of that. Um, and then we have electronic uh, health record data, whether you uh, met your primary health care visit uh, and what laboratory tests, uh, what tests you had during that visit. We merged that with um, Richard Nixon. Uh, technological skills. Um, uh, we merged that with uh, the pharmacy database, which said, what medications were you prescribed and did you fill them? Uh, that's merged with uh, the universe of hospitalization by cause, and we construct a patient semester level um, um, panel data set. Okay. Um, about 20% of the patients have diabetes, 90% have hypertension. So there are a number of patients that have both. It's 60% female. This is an older population that Jerry and I fit into of above 60. Uh, it's uh, largely, there's a lot of obesity uh, in the data. Okay. 
Um, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the impact of the reminder system on keeping a visit and then use the variation in the reminder system as an instrumental variable to look at the effect of having another visit on these uh, subsequent health and healthcare behavior data. And this just shows that the variation in compliance in the share of patients that received it in SMS conditional on a clinic fixed effect is orthogonal to or uncorrelated with a large number of baseline uh, uh, characteristics um, at the clinic level, including patient demographics, patient uh, health status, and, uh, and facility size uh, characteristics. Okay, um, so here are uh, some treatment effects. Um, on the, in all of these pictures, the left is gonna be the reduced form, which is the impact of a reminder on outcomes, and the right are gonna be the instrumental uh, uh, impacts of another preventive visit on the same outcome. So um, the first stage in all this is the effect of um, the SMS system on having a visit, and those uh, the blue dots are hypertension, and the green squares are diabetes. Both of these have significant effects on uh, having another visit. And then if you get the reminder, you're much more likely to have a blood pressure test, much more likely to be weighed, and more likely if you're diabetic to have a blood sugar test, although that's not statistically significant. Um, now we look at, um, at if you have a visit, how does that affect uh, whether you have the screening tests. And you'll see that the confidence regions in some cases look asymmetric. The reason for this is that the confidence regions are built off uh, anderson rubin statistics, which are robust to uh, weak instruments, and they can be uh, asymmetric. So if you have a visit, really, it's almost an increase to probability one, you're going to be at blood pressure and weight, and it's a 50 percentage, a 50 percent increase in the probability you get a hemoglobin A1C test uh, if you uh, have diabetes. Okay, so now let's look at medication adherence, and we're going to look at two outcomes. Did you have, did you refill your medication? So you got a medication before last visit. Um, did you refill it after this visit? And then did you refill it uh, uh, um, where uh, within time uh, to have 80% uh, adherence? This means if you ran out of pills based on the length of time between refills, would your adherent, uh, adherence be at least 80%? And so there's a large and statistically significant effect on, re on refilling. And then there's a, a, what turns out to be uh, a large effect on, um, on good adherence. And then looking at the effect of a visit, well, if you have a visit, that increases to probability one that you refill your medication. And there's a 20 percentage point increase in good uh, adherence. Um, all right. And then finally, what we're going to look at is hospitalizations. And here, the story we want to tell is that if you have these regular preventive screening visits, well, if there are any uh, complications of diabetes or hypertension, they would be caught earlier in a, uh, with a preventive screening, leading to more hospitalization and reduced inpatient mortality. And so what you see here again for the reduced form, the reminders seem to cause a large increase in hospitalization, um, but uh, not, not length of stay. And there is a reduction in, in hospital mortality for a cardiovascular uh, hospitalization. And then the effect of the visit is the same. It dramatically increases hospitalization rates 
and reduces uh, in-hospital mortality. So um, uh, I talked a bit about the story between, between uh, hospitalization. Um, we think that uh, this body of work is a contribution uh, to the literature on the Im impact of increased primary healthcare use. There are a number of studies. Uh, none of them, or almost none of them, deal specifically with chronic diseases. Uh, um, some of them are dealing with uh, the Medicaid population, which is much younger. There's a bit of work in Medicare, uh, the Medicare expansion of the U.S., which is similar age population to what we're looking at the at this. Most of those work through in, uh, insurance uh, as the identifying variation, which is a lower price uh, to getting the care. We have uh, a different instrument, um, so uh, we think we make a major contribution to the the value of primary care. Uh, we also contribute to appointment re re reminder systems. Uh, while there's uh, substantial evidence that these things work. Um, they're typically in small experimental samples over a very limited time. We look at scale and uh, we show these are quite robust uh, four and a half years uh, as well. So uh, that's it. Thanks.